We love you. We worship you. We welcome you. We pray, Father, that you would move now more powerfully. God, we pray we need you. We come to you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please keep your Bibles open there to Zechariah 4. Um, and I feel, like, I feel like I've got a, very, a real full heart today to share with you just some things that are on my heart that I think the Lord wants to speak uh, to us from Zechariah 4. When you, when you read a passage like this, <laughs> it makes me laugh really because the angel shows this picture of, the, of this remarkable picture of this lampstand and of the oil pouring in and, and he's saying to um, the prophet, he's saying, you know, don't you understand these things? And the prophet's going, no. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm with the prophet there, you know, I, I don't really understand these things either, but uh, God, God will speak to us today uh, as we receive his words by his Holy Spirit because uh, there is a real word here because this whole chapter is about this power of the Spirit coming upon us as God's people. It's about you receiving the power of the Holy Spirit this morning. I, I think this is a time, an uncomfortable time that we're living in, but it's also a time when a lot of people feel a great sense of insignificance, a lack of confidence, uh, a real sense of uncertainty, around uh, their relationship with God or around how to grow in the things of God. It's remarkable. I was talking to someone this week and was just saying that it's amazing how many people are so competent in the workplace and yet so uh, feel such a lack of confidence in spiritual things. Many of, many of you hold down complex jobs, really going for it in your field of industry or education or whatever it is you're doing in your workplace. But how many people struggle to pray out loud? How many people struggle to share their faith? How many people struggle to do the most basic things in the Christian life? How many of us struggle to worship? How many of us struggle to take time with God? It's not because it's beyond us. It's because there's something in us that's like a handbrake on in our hearts and in our lives. And there's something holding us back. There are obstacles uh, to the spirit moving. And I really believe today, and I, I'm praying and hoping as we end today, by the time we get to the end, I, I'd love to see this church just tons of, I'm going to invite people to come forward for prayer. I've got, so this, this passage has talk about oil in it, so I've got a little bit of oil here this morning. And I would love you to come and be anointed to pray that the Holy Spirit breaks out in your life more than he currently has been. And a lot of it is about us saying, yes, Lord, and getting rid of the obstacles. I just love that first song that we sung about speaking Jesus over our families, speaking Jesus over our workplace, Jesus over every part of who we are, over our mental health, our physical health. It's Jesus, friends. I was at a men's breakfast yesterday, which is a really great time. And one of the most brilliant things that was shared uh, was person after person went round the table and was just really sharing how much we wanted to open our hearts to one another because there are a lot of people going through a lot of issues and we don't always feel like we can just open up and have a safe place to really share how we really are and often that that's one of the things that that's one of those obstacles because we perhaps built a sort of wall between us and God that we are afraid to go through, to really be honest, open, vulnerable with God and with one another. Uh, and, and sometimes that's a barrier to us, uh, pressing on into the things of God. I wonder what, it, what is it for you that is holding you back from being on fire for God? What is it? Do, do you know what it is? Perhaps it's a darling sin that you like to hold on to and You'd quite like to just keep going in your own way, and you're not willing to surrender all to God and say, Jesus, take, take my life. Perhaps it is that feeling of insignificance that you just think, well, you know, other people are much better at things than me, 
Uh, I want, you know, how, how do you see yourself? I heard someone say this week, you know, do you, how many of us would see ourselves as an intercessor? You know, some people do. But do you know what? The ministry of intercession, of prayer, is for everyone. There is no gift of prayer. It's for everyone. And I think God wants to, us to rise up in prayer. He wants us to rise up in worship. He wants us to rise up over our families, our businesses, our communities. Uh, in every area of your life, Jesus wants you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That is what is going on here. And let's just, let's just do some background here because it really helps to understand what's going on here in Zechariah 4. So the prophet Malachi and uh, Haggai and Zechariah are prophesying at the same time. It's roughly like the year 520 BC. The, the people of Israel, of Judah, have come out of Babylon. They're back in the promised land. But life is not easy. It's quite hard, even though they're back in Jerusalem, which is where they love to be. Life is hard. One of the things that Haggai, who's the prophet just before Zechariah, he speaks to the people and he actually rebukes them and corrects them because he says to them, you're back in the promised land, but you're just doing your own thing. You're fulfilling what you want and you're neglecting the house of the Lord. So you're paneling your own houses, but the house of God is remaining in ruins and I wonder how many of us that would apply to. You know, perhaps even in, as we've come out of the exile of, of pandemic, if you like, uh, and people are beginning to get back to things, even though it's still hard, even though it still feels like there's shortage everywhere, it's still, and there's anxiety everywhere, and there's trouble and turmoil everywhere. And so what happens to us is that we go in on ourselves, and we try to resource ourselves, live in the, eke out the best we can for ourselves, and it's very understandable. And there's also fear around income or fear around sustainability of life and bills and you name it, and so on and so forth. And actually, I think one of the big things that God's calling his church to at this moment in time is to take our eyes off ourselves and put them on Jesus. Put our, fixing our eyes on Jesus. When is it ever okay for the church to serve herself? No, it's never okay. In good times, in season and out of season, we fix our eyes on Jesus. Have we got our eyes on him? Are your eyes or my eyes on Jesus? Did we come to church today to worship the living God? Or did we come to church today for somebody to give us a bit of a prop up? You know, for, you know please don't rely on me, okay, to give you a sort of injection, friends. I, I've got my own top up I need in my own house <laughs> with the Lord, Friends, I want to say to you, you will be much more flourishing in life the more you spend time with Jesus on your own, in your room, behind the closed door. There will be much more flourishing in your life the more you do that. And then when we come here, there will be like a fountain of overflowing worship. I've had this picture for the last three weeks now of us standing, and I've said to the Lord, Lord, is this me? It might be me, but it might be all of us. Standing in a puddle. And I feel like we're, we're in a puddle rather than in a river. And God wants to, is to us to be in the river of his Holy Spirit in Ezekiel 37. But we are content to kind of stand in the puddle. God wants far more for us. Far more for us, friends. If you, if you and I could just get five minutes in heaven right now and see the glory of God and see his majesty, his splendor, his awesome power, his tremendous, the tenderness of his love, we would never worry about life again. You, you would know that your Father in heaven knows all that you need before you even ask. And yet we spend so much time on our eyes, on ourselves. We, like Haggai, was talking to the people of Israel, get your eyes off yourselves and onto Jesus. He used this, this phrase in Haggai, which is give careful thought to your ways. 
And God would say the same to us today. Let's really think, how are we living in these days? How are we different? How are we, how are we depending on God and filled with God? And so this picture comes. The angel uh, appears here. Uh, and, and it says, the angel returned and woke me up. Uh, by the way, there's eight. This is, this is the, one of the series of eight visions that Prophet Zechariah has uh, in the book. And he says, uh, he asked me, what do you see? I answered, I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl at the top and seven lamps on it with the seven channels of the lamps. Also, there are two olive trees by it, one on the right bowl and one on the other on the left. I asked the angel who talked with me, what are these, my Lord? He answered, do you not know what these are? <laughs> No, my lord. That's very, (laughs) no. I have no idea. And then he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Okay, so what God is showing the prophet here, he's showing him in picture form. And the the prophet doesn't understand, like probably all of us wouldn't understand. Um, But then he says, well, this picture, let me declare it to you now. This is what the picture is. This is it. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. That's what the picture is. And you've got to understand that in the temple, in this, they were rebuilding the temple in this time. And in the temple, it's like there was this menorah or a, or a lamp stand. And it would, one of the priests' job every day was to go into the temple and keep the lamp lit as a sign and a symbol of the presence and power of God uh, always at work in his people. But what we see a difference here is that it's not, being, it's not being continually burning through human endeavor or through a priest going in to keep the oil topped up. What we're seeing here is there are two olive trees here. And there's a continual flowing, a continual flowing of oil into this lamp. And it's always lit. And it is always burning. Uh, and that's what the, the word of the Lord is to Zerubbabel. Now, who's Zerubbabel? I just need to introduce you to a couple of people. Zerubbabel was, the, uh, was like the civic leader in his time. He was actually a descendant of King David. Uh, and some people were looking to Zerubbabel uh, as a real leader. And alongside Zerubbabel was Joshua, who was the high priest. These are the two people that were really key in their day, as the Lord was building the temple, as the work of God was being done, and God wanted his people to do his work by the Holy Spirit. And so what God is saying to Zerubbabel, who's going through, Zerubbabel's in the midst of a building project, to build, rebuild the temple. And there's a work of rebuilding in your life and in mine. In this church, In this community, there is a work of rebuilding that's going on. Now, I want to ask us, how are we going about that work of rebuilding? Because this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And I want us to really take it to heart. This is the word of the Lord for this season. Not by might. Not by muscle, not by intellect, not by finance, not by advertising, not by effort, diligence, hard work, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And I really think we've all got so much to learn here. Honestly, I have so much to learn. And with you, I just want to say, Lord, teach me your ways in these days, because we don't want to go back to how church perhaps was. We need to go forward into what God has for us in the days to come. We need to be filled with the Spirit of God. When the people of God are full of the Holy Spirit, honestly, it it transforms everything. God wants to come into your life by the Holy Spirit. And, and I know that the reaction to this can often be like, who, me? You know, well, what, what can I offer? I haven't got anything to offer. I feel so small. I feel like the least. I feel like, you know, pff, there's other people qualified. There's other people who can do this. Um, you know, but do you know what? I just want to say break that stronghold. Break that lie in Jesus' name. That is not true. 
Every one of us is chosen, dearly loved. You are called, you are precious, you are honored in God's sight. You are a disciple of Jesus. You are a chosen one, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. You are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. And friends, today we need to get hold of who God is and get hold of who we are in Christ. So that we may, no, no, just thank you, but I don't mind the applause as long as you do it. Okay, I'm not interested. I don't care. I don't care if this is a good or a bad word. I just want you to obey it. Okay? <laughs> obey it. Listen to the Spirit of God. Don't, if uh, today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your heart. I'm giving you a moment that you will look back on now in eternity and wish you had taken. Okay? You're going to wish from heaven's glory that you had listened this morning because you've got an opportunity right now. You've got an opportunity that, that God is going to break something open. There is going to be something that we were, it would be like we were dreaming. The, when the Lord returned the, for, the, the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. You know, then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. God can do far more than we can ask or even imagine. We are satisfied with a thimble and full of God, and God wants to give us the ocean. God has got so much more. And that's why, friends, he says to him, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Then look what he says. What are you, almighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. I, I, uh, he says, uh, and then, then he will bring out the capstone to shouts of God. God bless it. God bless it. What is he saying there? You know, Zerubbabel is building the temple. And there's a work to be done. There's a ministry to be done. It's very practical work. But, the, but he needs the power of the Holy Spirit to, to build. He needs the power. And you and I, we need the power of the Holy Spirit to rebuild what God is doing, not only in St. Mary's, but in your street, in your workplace, everywhere you go, school, office, whatever place God's called you to be, not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. Are, you, are we willing to let God... Fill us with his Holy Spirit to be the best engineer, to be the best teacher, to be the best IT consultant that God has called you to be, or whatever it is you do for God, that the Spirit of the Lord would come upon you as a parent in your marriage, in your singleness, for your family. Whatever your state, state in your family life or in your life, perhaps you're living alone, but God is able to, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Whatever challenges you are facing, and, Zechari and Zechariah was talking to Zerubbabel who was facing the challenge of rebuilding the temple with an indifferent people. And he was saying to him, not by my or by power, but by my spirit. God wants the Holy Spirit to fill us so that we can think differently in, in the mind of Christ, so that we can, we can bring the love of God, so that there's empowerment in our lives to live for God in this crazy time in which we're living. This is the answer. A church living in the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the age of the Spirit. It's not about intellect or how smart you are. It's about how saturated you are. Okay? It's not about your resources and how rich you are. It is how God-filled you are. That is the measurement, and we need to change the measurements that we are using for, for success. Success is obey God. And even what, whatever that looks like for you, follow Jesus, obey the Lord, do what he tells you. That is the way. That is the way to... to to flourishing. That is the way of discipleship, the way of Jesus. 
So what are you, almighty mountain? Think about your mountains today. It might be a mountain to do with health or finances. It might be a mountain that is to do with your circumstances. What are you, almighty mountain? Before me, you will become a plain. You will be leveled out. God is able to make all grace abound to you. God is able. If we come to him by faith in simple Faith, God is able to make all grace abound to you, friends, today. His word is true. It's living and active. And so he says, what are you, a mighty mountain? So we might be saying to ourselves, yeah, that's all very well, you saying that to me, but here is the problem. Here is the big mountain. Um, you know, uh, that, here is the, 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 the obstacle. How are you going to build a temple on a mountain? Well, before, God is able to flatten that mountain. This is our God. He's the God of Moses who, who, when the people of Israel were up against the Red Sea, he just parted it. It happened. He's the God of the impossible. And friends, today we've got, by simple faith, I'm not just saying God's a slot machine, whatever we want, we'll get out. That's not it. It's whatever he wants. Not my will, but yours be done. We've just got to be the church who get aligned, in line, and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, whatever you want, Lord. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Then he goes on and he says, uh, Then the word of the Lord came to me. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundations of this temple. His hands will also complete it. Then you will know that I am the Lord Almighty have sent you. Who dares despise the day of small things? And that's really important. Again, let's not, be, let's not allow ourselves to give in to insignificance. Insignificance is such a stronghold that it has such a hold on so many people. You know, you don't believe your prayers are doing anything. You don't believe that serving God in the way that you do is making any difference. Of course it is. It 100% is. We often believe that we minimize what God wants to do through us. And it is not humility. Uh, God, God, want, God wants you to see. Don't despise the day of small things. You might feel your prayers are small, but just keep praying them. You might feel your acts of service are small. Just keep offering them. Look what the little boy's lunch did. You know, two loaves and fish, and God multiplied it. Our God is the God who multiplies. Let's not despise the day of small things. Whatever you've got to offer, just give it to God. Just give him your heart, your life, everything, lock, stock, and barrel. And that's, that is the issue, friends, because so often, like the people of Israel who wandered away and wandered away from God, even when they were coming back out of exile, they were still indifferent. And Haggai and Zechariah and Malachi had to prophesy to them and say to them, return to the Lord. And that's what I'm wanting to do today, to prophesy to the church and for us to say to us, let's return to the Lord our God. Let's return to his Ways. His ways are higher than our ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so, higher, so are his ways higher than our ways. We have done church our way for so long, and we need to, not just church, but work, family, everything. We've been doing it our way for so long. It's, so, it's the only grid reference we have for it. You know, it's so hard to even imagine a life in God that is more than what we've got. Uh, I've often said this, that, you know, we, we struggle to conceive of what an outpouring of the Spirit is like because most of us have never seen one. I've, I've not seen what God is capable of. I've read about it, but I've never seen it with my eyes or heard it with my ears. And I'm like, Lord, I don't know what this is all about. I don't know what kind of you've got me into here, but, Lord, I want to, I want to see that. I want to know that. Lord, I want to see what it's like to, to, for you, Lord, what is it like for me to be a primary school teacher in the power of the Holy Spirit? Lord, what, is it, what would it look like for my life group to be not by might or by power, but by my spirit? 
to be led by the Spirit, knowing the conviction of the Spirit, the truth of the Spirit, knowing the life and walking with the Holy Spirit more and more. Friends, there's a whole life that God wants us to know. And I think we're only standing in the puddle of it. And God wants us to get far deeper, far deeper. It's an invitation, but it is so, it's so radical. It is so wonderful. It is costly, but yet it's like the pearl of great price that if we could really see this, we would give everything up to possess that kind of life. Because how many of us are really happy with the one we've got? You know, really, God is able And then it goes on and says, who dares despise the day of small things, he says. Um, We'll kind of come on to the last thing here. Since the uh, seven eyes of the Lord that range throughout the world will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone in the hand of Zerubbabel, the temple's going to be finished. Then I asked the angel, what are these two olive trees on the right and on the left of the lampstand? Again, I asked him, what are these two olive branches beside the two gold pipes that pour out golden oil? And he replied, do you not know who these, what these are? No, my Lord, he said. So he said, these are the two who are anointed to serve the Lord of all the earth. And if you were to look through the whole book here, Uh, which we don't have time, but you would realize that the two people that are being spoken about, the the two olive trees are Zerubbabel and Joshua, the leader that God called and the high priest. They're the two that that God is prophesying about here in the passage. And interestingly, he he doesn't just call them trees, actually he calls them branches. Did you notice that? It says, who are the, uh, what are these branches? Uh, can anyone else remember another uh, reference to branches in the Bible? It's in John chapter 15 where Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you will bear much fruit. Jesus, this is the Old Testament, John 15, which is so full of, because Jesus also speaks about the Holy Spirit John chapter 14 to 17. And he's calling us. We are the branches. Jesus is the vine and we're the branches. Just like Zerubbabel, Joshua were the branches here. And there was continual supply of oil flowing through them. The the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God wants to anoint you with the Holy Spirit. And he will continually supply uh, uh, from an from a eternal resource that he has. You know, those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will rise up with wings like eagles, run and not grow weary, walk and not be faint. How many of us today are just tired? We are just overwhelmed. We're just, you know, and that's what Zerubbabel and Joshua probably experienced because there were mountains, there were, they felt they were tiny and there were mountains in front of them. And God today, just like he said, this is the word to Zerubbabel. You're not small and you're the mountain that you see ahead of you is I'm going to level it. Uh, and God would say that to us too. You know, you are the branches. God is going to fill his church with his Holy Spirit. God and we with the Holy Spirit together, word and spirit, people of God and Holy Spirit coming together. Friends, that is when there will be power and truth and love poured out from us. And we will see the sovereign, wonderful hand of God at work among us in ways that we never thought possible. Now, here's the brilliant thing. It's not something for us to observe It's something for us to participate in. Amen? Did you know that God wants you to join in the next move of God? Amen? How many of us see ourselves as disciple makers? How many of us see ourselves as prayer, people of prayer? How many of us see ourselves as soul winners or worshipers or givers or, you know, you name it, whatever it might be, reformers in social justice? There's so many things that God wants to make us full of this Holy Spirit, but he wants to partner with us in, out there in the world to see his kingdom come. Healings. How many of us can see, believe that if you pray for the sick, they will be healed? Or if you cast out demons, they will flee? Amen? Amen. 
Let me just say something that's a bit out there because I've never done this, but even praying to raise the dead. Amen? Amen. What did Jesus actually say? Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. That was his manifesto. It, maybe that sort of thing makes us, pulls us up short and we think, am I really a Christian? <laughs> I mean, are we doing the signs of the kingdom of God? What is it that, that would show that you and I are Christians and believe in Jesus? Not just that we can say the creed or we can, you know, read the Bible for 10 minutes. It's actually about following. It's about living. It's about walking out the life that Jesus calls us to live. Now, this is the abundant life. This is the life of the Spirit. Don't walk in the flesh, which, uh, you know, will, will just lead to destruction. Walk in the Spirit. Uh, live by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, friends, this is, this is for us. We're supposed, to part, we're supposed to participate, engage. Uh, do you know one of the biggest things that is, breaks my heart as a church leader in the 21st century, it is the disengagement. Disengagement so often that I've, I sense among the people of God. Step back. Not, 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 that's your job, not mine. Or, you know, it's easy, isn't it? And it happens because we are overwhelmed. It happens because we're afraid. It happens because we're seeing mountains. It happens because we feel insignificant. It's understandable. But let's not do it. How many, how many people full of the Holy Spirit disengage? No. That's not the way. When, you engage, when you're full of the Holy Spirit, you lean in. You step in. You say, this is our house. <laughs> this is our house. Amen? It's your house. It's not mine. This is your house. When I, when you, when I come into your house, uh, you know, as a host, you, you host. This, is, this belongs to all of us. You may think, you, you, it, oh, is, it, is this my house? Yes, it is. You are part of what God wants to do. Honestly. Amen? Oh, Lord. Come on. <laughs> mm. Friends, today we need to get hold of this. Not just in church on Sunday morning. We need to get hold of it Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday when no one is looking. Uh, get on, getting into prayer, into scripture, saying, God, fill me. God, I must have more of you. God, I'm thirsty. God, I'm living in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a culture which is so confused and anti-God and people are turning away from your word like right, left, and center. God, God, I need your Holy Spirit. God, in a time where I feel so small, when it feels like my problems are so big, God, what can I do? This is the word of the Lord to you. Friend, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. It was the same. It's always been the same. It will never change. And so we, it's not up to God to bend to us. We're supposed to bend to him. And don't wait for another word from God until you've done this one. God says, not by might nor by power. And so let's come this morning. Um, I just wanted to share that as my, from my heart with you. Uh, that's my heart for us as a church. I'm not, I'm not uh, claiming to be perfect myself. Uh, just like those men who were sharing the other day, uh, I've got plenty. You know, please don't think I'm all sorted out. I've got plenty in my life where I need God, the Holy Spirit, over my family, over my things that are going on in, in, in my life. I need God. We need God. Amen. I'm just a great sinner, but Jesus is a great Savior. Come to Christ. Don't come to anything else. Let's stand. Let's stand. And um, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'd like you to take this prayer into this week. To say it after me, not by might. Let's start again. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Yes, Lord. 
So, Father, we come and we honestly come, Lord. This is, there's no hype. I'm not interested in that, Lord. We pray for a real meeting with Jesus. We pray, Father, as we sung earlier on, we speak Jesus over our families and our workplaces and our impossible situations, over our anxieties, over our fears, over our sicknesses. God, we speak the name of Jesus. We come, Lord, because we have, to whom else shall we go? Lord, you, are, you, you have the words of eternal life. And so just if there's any, anyone this morning who's just saying yes to this, uh, just let's come down to the front and I'd love to just briefly anoint people with oil um, because you're just saying yes. Lord, not by my, I want that, I want that to happen in my life. I want not by might nor by power, but by my spirit and I'm willing for that. It may be costly, it may, I, don't, I don't know all that it's going to entail, but I'm just saying, yes, Lord. Yeah? So just come forward and right now if that is you. Just push back, push the people by if they're in the, in the rows. Just um, hallelujah. Come up to the front here. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Can you come forward a wee bit? <laughs> yes, Lord. Mm, okay. Mm. Yes, Lord. I just want to say there's no pressure. Honestly, please, this is up between you and God. People are in all stages of a spiritual journey, and it's absolutely fine if you're in your seat, okay? That's fine. No pressure. We just want you to come if you're, if, if you're serious with God. So, Lord, and can I just ask you to make a commitment? I think the biggest commitment I'd like you to make today to actioning this is to spending your own time with God, okay? Alone with God. Or, or if you struggle with that, find a, a spiritual like buddy who can help you come to God. But you need an encounter. So do I. So just hold your hands in front of you and just pray your best prayer. Pray your best prayer to God and say, God, please, I say yes. I'm just going to come around and I'm, there's far too many for me to stop. So I'm just going to anoint you with oil now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Receive the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. This oil is just a sign of what God wants to do. It's a sign of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. And just as I anoint you, just as you're waiting to... Just begin to call out to God. Thank you, Lord. Just begin to pray. Friends, you, we're the church. We're the armies of the living God. The devil is trembling right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, we've got lots of things we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on Jesus. Lord, we don't know what to do. Excuse me. We don't know what to do, Lord, but our eyes are on Jesus. And we pray Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, right now. Just begin to call out to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are good. Jesus, over my workplace. Jesus, over my retirement. Jesus, over my family, my children, my grandchildren. Come, Holy Spirit. Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Lord.